Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna show you how to use the new input system in Unity. So in a previous video I've created a simple FPS controller using the old input system. As you can see I can move using the AWSD keys. Also I can look around with the mouse and I can jump with the spacebar button. But the problem is that I've used the old input system for that. In this video we are going to switch to the new input one. So if you didn't watch the video about the FPS controller, you can check it out. The link is under the video description. Also, you could find the project link under the video description as well. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is to install the new input system. And because it's a package, we can install it using the package manager. So let's go to window, package manager, and let's search for input system. And here is the package, I'm using the version 1.0.2. So let's go ahead and hit this install button to install it. But if you didn't get it, make sure to select Unity Registry from here. And let's hit install. Once it's done, make sure to restart the program to enable the new input system. And now we've successfully installed the new input system. So let's go ahead and update our scripts. So basically I have a mouse look script. In this script, I used the uh, mouse X and the mouse Y to look around. And under the player movement, we've used the horizontal and the vertical inputs. So we can move the player using the AWSD keys. And also we can jump with the spacebar button. Basically, to use the new input system, we have two options. We could directly get the input from an input device like the mouse or the gamepad and so on. Or we could indirectly get the input using the input action. Don't worry, we are going to cover both of these, but I'm gonna start with the direct method so we can directly get the input from an input device using the mouse keyword or the gamepad keyword. And to do that, I'm gonna open up the mouse look. So let's go ahead and open it up. And under the update method, here I'm using the old input system to get the mouse X and the mouse Y values. So let's go ahead and comment these lines of code. This will not work because we've disabled the old input system. So let's go ahead and redeclare them. So let's use float mouse x and I'm going to give it the default value 0. And let's do the same thing for the mouse y using float mouse y equals 0. And then to access the right values from the mouse, first we need to use the namespace unity engine dot input system. So let's go up here using unity engine dot input system then let's go down here we can access the mouse using the mouse keyword dot current so this is going to check for the current mouse that is plugged into the computer but first we need to check if it's not null if there is a mouse in that case we can access the values so let's use an if statement using if mouse dot current if it's not null in that case Let's go ahead and initialize the mouse x using mouse x equals and to get the value it's very simple we use mouse dot current dot delta then we have this method dot read value but this method returns a vector 2 so we need to access the first component which is dot x that's the mouse x value and let's go ahead and use the same thing for the mouse y it is equal to mouse.current.delta.read value, but here we need to access the y component using dot y. And that's how the new input system works. But I'm gonna add the lines of code for the gamepad. Of course, we need to be able to use the gamepad as well. It's very simple. It's like the mouse, but here instead of using the mouse keyword, we use gamepad. So if the current gamepad that is plugged into the computer, it's not null, then we can access the mouse x using gamepad dot current but here we use the right stick so in a gamepad we have the right and the left stick so we need to specify which one normally we use the right stick for that and the same thing down here let's use gamepad dot current dot right stick and that's how we can directly get the input from an input device like the gamepad and the mouse so let's save that also, I want to show you the other method and I'm going to implement it inside the player movement so we can declare an input action like movement, shoot, jump and so on. So I'm going to show you how to do that. 
it's very simple let's go ahead and open up the player movement down here I'm using the horizontal and the vertical inputs so to use the new input one so let's go ahead and comment these as well and then let's go up here using unity engine dot input system and in this script I'm gonna go with the input action approach so we need to declare an input action so let's go down here the type is input action so an input action is like an event like movement shoot reload and so on so we need a movement input action so I'm gonna call it movement and let's add another one for the jump the same thing the type is input action but let's call this one jump then in the start method we can initialize these using for example for the jump action we use the method new input action first we need to give it a name like jump and then we need to add a binding basically a binding is like a trigger for an action for example in order to jump we need to press the spacebar button so the binding here is the spacebar button and to do that we need to pass in the binding uh, key and in these double quotes we write the uh, trigger which is the uh, spacebar button so we use keyboard then slash and the name of the key which is spacebar it's actually called space then semicolon but also we can jump using the gamepad so we have another method to add another binding to the jump uh, input action using jump dot add binding and in here we can pass in the binding directly so I'm gonna use the gamepad so we use this notation gamepad then slash and the key which is the A key and now in order to use this input action we need to check for it over here basically down here I'm checking for the jump button using the old input system so we need to change that we could use the jump input action and we have a method called dot read value but we need to give it the type of the value basically it returns a float so we need to convert it to true or false so we have a method called mathf dot approximately so we need to compare this value with one so this is going to return true if this value equals one otherwise it's going to return false so that's how we can use the jump input action now let's implement the movement one the same thing we need to set it over here let's use movement equals new input action and let's call it movement or player movement as you like then we need to add the binding basically to move we are using the AWSD keys or the arrow keys on the keyboard but also we can use the left stick of the gamepad so I'm gonna pass in here the binding key with the value in these codes gamepad then slash and we are going to use the left stick and like we've done here we can add another uh, binding using the add binding method so let's go ahead and add the WASD keys or the arrow keys and here it's a little bit different because we are moving using more than one key we need to use the method dot add composite binding so here we need to pass in a name I'm gonna call it dpad and then to add the WASD keys we use dot with and this method takes two parameters the first one is the name so for example we have the up key I'm gonna pass in up and the second parameter is the key on the keyboard so on the keyboard we use keyboard slash w and then we can add the other keys with the same way dot with the first parameter is the name for example let's add down and then keyboard slash s and I'm gonna do the same thing for the others You could also add the arrow keys as well so here we can go up using the up arrow as well so i'm gonna copy this and with the same name but we need to change here the key which is the up arrow so let's go ahead and write up arrow and the same thing for the others so i'm gonna add this option as well and that's how we can initialize the movement input action 
Now we need to use it to get the horizontal and the vertical input. And to do that, let's go ahead and go over here. Basically, we are setting the horizontal input inside the X float. So let's declare float X. And to get the value, we use the movement action, then dot read value. But here we need to pass in a vector two. So we need the X and the Y component. So we need to pass in here the vector two type. And to get the X value, we need to use dot X. And also the same thing for the uh, Z value. So let's go ahead and use float Z equals movement dot read value. The same thing gets a vector two, but let's go ahead and access the second component. But make sure to use dot Y because a vector two has the X and the Y component. And here I've called the first one X and the second one Z. Basically, I've used that to move the player. So let's go ahead and save all of that. But we have one problem. Here we are declaring the input actions like movement jump. We've initialized them as well, but we need to enable them. So we need to use movement dot enable. So this method will enable the movement input action. And let's do the same thing for the jump one using jump dot enable. And that's pretty much it guys. So let's save all of that and let's go back into Unity and let's hit play and there you go. I can move using the AWSG keys. Also, I can jump with the spacebar button and I can look around. We just need to adjust the mouse sensitivity. So I've actually attached the mouse look script to the main camera. So let's go over here and adjust the mouse sensitivity. Let's change it to 30. So that's pretty much it guys for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to write it under the comment section down below. Also make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notifications bell so that you don't miss any one of my next videos. And I will see you in the next one.